So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and today we're gonna to talk about Microsoft Office. And if you guys have been watching the channel, you guys know that Microsoft Office is a pretty big topic of conversation. When it comes to my channel and all the devices that I use it on, whether that is the iPad, or whether that is a MacBook, or even on my iPhone right here. But what I wanted to talk to you guys about today was how Microsoft has been doing in this M1 transition over to this new Mac OS. So basically what I wanna find out is how well it's been running over this last month, if some of the applications have gone from Intel based to M1 based and then see if there's other applications that have stayed Intel based and see how they're working with Mac OS Big Sur on an M1 MacBook. So let's hop right into it guys. So the first thing I wanted to walk you guys through was actually how to install the application. Because in the first video that I made on the Microsoft suite of applications, there was two ways to download them. You can either go to office.com or go through the app store. And now if you guys are on an M1 based Mac computer already, I highly recommend going into the app store and downloading it that way. And then go into Microsoft Office, view them, and then this is the Microsoft Office productivity suite based for the M1 MacBook. And in this suite, you get six applications. You get Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneNote, and OneDrive. So all of these applications were already turned from a Intel-based application into an M1 application. And overall, the applications are working great. So what I wanna walk you guys through is actually how quickly they turn on. So as you guys can see, all of them are closed right now. They're not active down here, they're all closed. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open them all. So Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Teams, Microsoft OneDrive. So now Microsoft Teams is the only application that's actually not made for the M1 Mac yet. And you guys can see that it's still opened relatively quickly. So Microsoft Teams was actually translated via Rosetta the very first time that I downloaded. For Microsoft Teams, I actually had to download it from office.com. So keep that in mind when it comes to your Microsoft suite. But the second you download all the applications, all you have to do is sign into your Outlook or sign into any of the applications with your Microsoft username and password, and then you have full access to this entire suite of products, which is amazing to see, and they work so quickly, so rapidly. And now this video isn't gonna be a tutorial on how to use any of these applications, because most people know how to use them, and people just wanna know if they open, if they work, how well they work, and so far, it's been working wonderfully. There's only been one hiccup, and the one hiccup that I wanna highlight is actually with Microsoft OneDrive. And with Microsoft OneDrive, if I open this up a little bit bigger, go into one of my random folders that I have that's in the OneDrive in the cloud. So if I click on one of these folders that I have in my OneDrive, which actually did come over from my Intel-based MacBook Air, if I click on one of them, you see that there's this little thing that says here, waiting to update. So for some reason, every time I try to open an app or open up a file that says waiting to update from my OneDrive, it doesn't let me. So I don't know if it's a syncing issue or if a compatibility issue, but I've had this issue going on for a little while. The only way that I found out how to bypass this issue is by physically going into office.com, going into the OneDrive inside of office.com and then downloading that same file and moving it into this folder. So once I do that, then the file will open up normally. But again, it's a, it's a little bit of a hassle to go through because I would have to go into here, go through the same file structure, trying to find the actual file itself. So if I go down here, so I'd have to go through this whole process of re-downloading this exact file. So if I want to download it, here it is, and then I'll have to grab it from here and move it into here, replace, and then I can double click this and then it opens up and it's saved into my OneDrive and it's finally good to go everywhere else. But that's just one little hassle that I had to deal with when dealing with OneDrive on the M1, which is something that did not happen on the Intel-based MacBook Air that I had. It ran a lot slower, but this situation didn't really happen because there was no syncing issues, which for right now, as you guys can see, it, there is a little bit of a weird syncing issue and sometimes it gives me the, the spinning wheel of death, which we all want to avoid. But outside of that, outside of my OneDrive syncing issue, it works perfectly. And again, once that OneDrive issue is remediated, basically as I start to download the files and work with my workaround that I've been talking about, then it works fine. It just, it's a matter of whenever I need something, if it's not synced yet, then I have to go back into the office.com like I showed you and fix that issue. But overall, like I said, these applications work so quickly, so fast, it syncs to your OneDrive. All you have to do is grant access to whatever you're doing, grant access to the OneDrive, and then all of a sudden it's opening up everything that I need to open. And then if you're a Microsoft Excel user on Mac OS, it works exactly how it's supposed to work. It works exactly how it would on the Windows side. You can do pivot tables, 
you can add your custom formatting, you can import fonts, you can do whatever seems to be necessary. And like I said, you can start pivot tables, edit pivot tables, manipulate them all within Microsoft Excel on Mac OS. So it's a beautiful thing and overall, and I've been very happy with how these applications turned out and how quickly Microsoft was able to kind of swallow their pride and move these into an M1 formatted application. But let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. So as everybody was able to see, the Microsoft main suite of products works extremely well on the M1 MacBook Air or any M1 Mac device because they were already built and they were already transferred from Intel over to an M1 SoC compatibility. So again, the one issue that I've had really is with Microsoft OneDrive and that syncing issue. Other than that, everything's worked great. Even Microsoft Teams, which runs as an Intel-based software, still works amazingly on this M1 MacBook Air. And the comparison is night and day. I'm able to video chat, work within Teams, and also still have all my Chrome tabs open, still be doing other things on my screen aside from just video chatting, which is something that I really could not do, at least not do well with that i5 MacBook Air that I had just in June of this year. So overall, I'm happy with the M1 MacBook. Again, is it replacing my iPad Pro? No, it is not. It is not replacing my iPad Pro. I just kind of wanted to make a video on the power of this thing, and I'm excited to see what Apple does next. Are they going to put these M1 chips in iPads? Should we wait for M1X or an M2 chip for next year? Is this just the beginning? There's a lot of things coming down the pipeline that I'm really excited for, but next video should be a desk setup tour for my M1 MacBook Air and exactly how I would, you know, navigate my desk to get exactly what I need to do done. But until that video, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, check out channel sponsor paper like down below and excited for this year, everybody. Until next time.